Which of the following is the most likely causative agent of the patient's condition? CMV, herpes simplex, type one or type two, HPV or varicella zoster virus. Okay. So a 30 year old female presents with a two day history of painful grouped vesicles on the air, on an erythematous base in a genital area, in her general, general genital area. She reports that this is her first time she's experienced such symptoms. She recently began a new sexual relationship and did not use barrier protection. A tank, a shank smear is performed on the vesicular fluid revealing multinucleated giant cells. Which of the following is the most likely causative agent of this patient's condition? Okay. Um, with the painful base, with the uh, risk factor of new sexual relationship and did not use protection, as well as a shank smear, um, I know this is a herpes simplex. Type 1 and type 2, I don't know 100% the difference. I'm going to say type 1. That I got is type 1. And I don't think I can change it um, because I don't know enough of type 2. But I'm going to say type 1. Okay. So the answer is actually type 2. Oh, okay. No, you're good. You're good. So you did you did everything beautifully. You knew it was herpes, right? You just didn't remember what type is type. So I can help you kind of remember this really easy, right? Type 1 is going to be kind of your oral cavity, oh, right? right? Around yeah. your lips. Yeah. And the way you remember that is... One, I always think of one is kind of at the top of the body and then two is below. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's how I remember it. You can kind of remember a different way, but that's how I remember it. Type one is going to be kind of where your lips are and um, kind of your face is. And then type two is going to be kind of all the um, the sexual transmitted yeah. diseases, type two. And so I think I knew this actually. I knew this. I This is what this is what my frustration is like when in questions and stuff. It's like, I'll get this question wrong, but I think in the back of my head, I knew this. Sure. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, that's the most frustrating part for me. No, I got you. I got you. I would say this, right? I would say that um, when you when you have that feeling, right, just think to your head that you are 90% there, okay? Yeah. Um, that 10% that you were missing, that you missed this question, right? Unlikely that you're going to miss this again. And when you kind of come to this, it's like, okay, it'd be, like you said, you you would get it down to one and type one and type two, kind of come up with some weird ways to remember. I mean, I have weird ways to remember all sorts of things, but this, I mean, for years and years and years, that's how I remember it. Type one is on top. That's how I remember it. And type two is below, right? Makes because, sense. you know, one comes before two. So I always look at, when I look at a patient, I look from their head and they go down to their toes, right? That's how I remember it. And so if you kind of remember something like that, because um, on histology is going to look all the same, right? But what type it is, um, you know, that's just which type is more uh, predilection for what part of the body. So, okay, makes sense. And now, since we're already on the topic, um, I guess a little bit of a trick question for you because you know I like teaching you in different ways. So, um, if let's say a dentist has herpetic Whitlow, okay, is that type one or type two? And do you know what herpetic Whitlow is? I do. It's when they have their fingers um, in their in the mouth of a patient. And so I'm assuming now because it's a, in the mouth of a patient, it's type one. Bingo. Good job. Good correlation. Right. So if they ever ask you, right, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but definitely for sure it's it's plausible because then you have to think like, oh, dentists work in the mouth. If they get cut, then they get, you know, herpes on their finger. Then, you know, it's type one. Right. So. Yes. Yes.